I'm Creek Stewart, best-selling survival author and television host. My job takes me to some pretty incredible places all over the world. And when it comes to weird, creepy, crawly, and just plain gross wilderness food options, I've pretty much eaten it all. But my right-hand man, Jake Wild, well, he sticks to a pretty standard Western diet. Really? <laughs> But here's the deal, if he's going to work for me and be a survival guy, he's got to be willing to sink his teeth into anything and everything the wild places have to offer. Welcome to Creek's Survival Kitchen. Well, are you ready for another one, man? So you may or may not know that one service that Jake and I do here at Willow Haven Outdoor here at Creek Stewart Incorporated is we do Wild Edible Plant of the Month Club, where every month we ship out a tutorial, an ID sheet for a different wild edible plant um, that goes into a binder. You can see kind of a sample of these sheets right here. So it talks about all the different unique identifying features of different wild edible plants. And so... I thought I would teach Jake Wild one of the most important wild edible plant lessons today. Okay. And that is? And that is. So it's December as we film this. And if you go for wild edible plants in the winter, let's right. say like dandelion, for example, yeah. you'll be able to find dandelion leaves in a lot of places in the dead of winter. But one thing that you really won't appreciate until you try them is that they are incredibly bitter. Okay. Okay. When dandelion leaves, for example, are really young, they've got a note, a hint of bitterness, but it's kind of like a good kind of bitter, yeah. you know, like a bitter tone, like a radicchio or something like that. Okay. But when you get more into the late summer, into the fall and into the winter, those bitter tones become almost overwhelming. Okay, so there's only one way to really teach that lesson to you. And so we're gonna create today what I call the most bitter survival soup in the world. <laughs> okay. Good thing it's at least cold outside, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we're gonna take our good blender here and we're gonna head out into the woods, to the pond, near the pond, and we're gonna gather up a few ingredients for making this soup. You up for it? I'm up for it, let's go. Let's go. Okay, so first step, man, is finding dandelion greens, okay? okay? They're still out, even in the dead of winter, like right here or some. Dandelions come from a rosette. See how these are growing out mm -hmm. in kind of a circle yeah. here? Now that's called a rosette. They're all gonna grow out from kind of a central tap root, okay? okay? And then dandelion leaves are lobed. This is a really great example. And the lobes are toothed. They're toothed and they point back toward the center of the plant. Okay. And the end of a dandelion leaf kind of looks like an arrowhead. Oh yeah, I see that. Okay, see how that kind of looks like an arrowhead yeah. right there? It's very arrowhead shaped. And they do not have hair. Okay. Okay, so they're hairless because there are some look-alikes to dandelion leaves, but they have little dense hairs all over them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's just go around and just collect some and throw them in the blender here. So, I've heard of people cooking with dandelion before, but uh, I've never personally had it myself. And... I don't know what to expect from these. I mean, I know that Creek told me they're gonna be bitter, but I don't know exactly how bitter these are gonna be, so a little nervous about it. Nice. All right, man, we've got a pretty decent batch here. Now it's time to get the base for our soup, which is gonna come right out of that pond. Oh, pond broth! <laughs> <laughs> pond broth exclusively used for cooking in the French Highlands. <laughs> That's not true. Well, I was going to say. sounded like it might be, though. <laughs> All right. Let's get this to the survival kitchen, and we'll cook it up. Man, it's cold out there. Well, I know, man. Well, here we are. 
We got our uh, blender full of pond water and dandelion greens. <laughs> so making this the world's most bitter survival soup is pretty simple, okay? We're literally just gonna blend this up. Okay. And then we do have to boil it because right. of the pond water. So we're gonna put it in this pan, boil it, and then it should be good to go. Liquify. <laughs> There we go. It's starting to look pretty soon. That looks like green smoothie right there <laughs> almost. That's good. That's green, man. I mean, I can smell the bitter. You bring it to a boil. We'll pour it into a bowl and see what you think. It's boiling nice and good now, man. Roll and boil, that's what you want. We gotta kill all those microbials in that pond water we don't want him getting we just want him we just want his mouth puckered a little bit we don't want him buckled over with <laughs> botulism tonight giardia <laughs> giardia <laughs> how's it smell hot yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know man you know it's it definitely smells leafy if you've ever cooked with bitter greens that's what it smells mm, like yeah. But I have a feeling that because you basically emulsified this in the blender, you've released a lot of the bitterness <laughs> that otherwise would have been trapped in the leaf. <laughs> I don't know. There we go. All right, man, you think it's cooled off enough? Yeah, I think I can handle that. All right. Well, <sighs> down the hatch. Just get pukey ready, just in case. <laughs> so let's dig down deep here and bring up some of this. There you go. Green right there. Now, dandelions are totally edible. Right. People eat them all over the globe. It smells a little bit like grass. Yeah. <laughs> like boiled grass. <laughs> all right, down the hatch. It's bitter. Uh, it's like bitter spinach almost, really. Really? Yeah. Take some more, man. Get some good stuff off of there. Oh, yeah. Now, here, here, here. Get some get some of that chunky. Yeah, there we go. There. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Get some of that chunky. All right. I mean... Palatable? It's totally palatable. Um, it's totally passable as survival food. Um, I mean, it's not something that I'd be like just itching to go outside and pick for myself and throw into a soup. But I mean, this is just water and dandelion leaves and it's yeah. totally palatable. So if you had uh, salt, pepper, things like that to kind of add to it, it'd be a game changer. Really? Yeah. It's t I mean, especially on like a cold day. Yeah. I mean, it's warm. It's... It's great. I mean, you know, <laughs> for for what you would need in a survival situation, this totally suffices. It's a little bitter, but I think it's one of those things. Like the more you eat, the more used to it you'll get. Yeah. Yeah. It just tastes like a bitter spinach, man. Yeah. It tastes yeah. like a bitter spinach. Well, it's totally a wild edible, and once again, Jake Wild has stepped up to the plate and eaten. A little less tasty survival food. <laughs> Good job today, man. Great job. Thanks.